What is up guys, it's Tom from Tech Time and I'm back with another video. Today I have my one year review on the Samsung Galaxy S8. After a year, is the phone still running great? Is it still a good buy? If you're coming from an older phone, is it worth grabbing? If you're coming from a different phone, is it worth grabbing? The Samsung Galaxy S9 has been out for about a couple weeks now. So there's a lot of things that go into it, but we'll get into them. This phone last year, when it dropped, was one of the top phones out. Absolutely gorgeous. Came with the 18 by nine aspect ratio, and it had a 1440 by 2960 screen with 570 pixels per inch density. Absolutely gorgeous, super AMOLED. Just look at the screen, it is unbelievable. One of the most gorgeous phones, screens that you're ever gonna see on a phone. As of now, even the new Samsung screens are a little bit better, but this thing is still incredible. Great outdoor viewing angles in the sunlight. Overall, just a great, gorgeous screen. It's glass on glass. You had Corning Gorilla Glass 5 and 5 on the back. You had this fingerprint sensor move to the back was the update from the Samsung Galaxy S7. The S7 had had it on the front with a physical uh, fingerprint sensor and home button. Now you have this haptic feedback home button right there and the fingerprint sensor got moved to the back. A lot of people gave it a lot of grief for putting it in this position. Me, it didn't bother me that much. I use a case on it, but without a case, it could be a problem. But I got used to it fairly quickly, and it wasn't a huge problem for me. But a lot of people did, and for you, that could become a problem. You have fast wireless charging because of the glass back. You have a heart rate sensor and your flash. You have a 12 megapixel camera with an f1.7 aperture. And as of when this phone dropped, this was the number one camera out there and still competes you know, pretty much with every camera out there. A lot of flagship phones that came out had you know, maybe a little bit better cameras, but this thing will compete and you can great, create great photos, great video, 4K, 1080p, whatever it is, you're gonna get pretty good quality, almost spectacular. The front-facing camera is an eight megapixel camera with an f1.7 aperture. It has auto focus, but it's not the best. It does beautify things a little bit too much and make everything really soft, but in you know, great light, it does do well. In low light, it can be a little grainy, but it is a front-facing camera, eight megapixel, it is capable. You can get nice selfies and you can produce Instagram-ready photos from there, if that's what you're into. Internals of this thing, you have a Snapdragon 835 with four gigabytes of RAM. You have a nano SIM or a hybrid dual SIM, and you also have a micro SD slot. That is cool, comes with 64 gigabytes of onboard storage, but like I said, you can expand that with the micro SD card up to, I think, 256 gigabytes, which is great. You can you know, change them if you want to. You can throw one in while you're going on vacation, take that out, and then throw another one in, and you'll always have that data on an SD card. That is one thing that I love about Samsung. They always provide you SD card support. One thing they don't give you is adaptable storage. You cannot make this internal storage. You cannot have it where some Android phones have that option. You do not have that option with Samsung. They have limited that option, which is you know not the best thing, but you still have the SD card support for photos, videos. You can move some app cache and stuff like that to it. But overall, 64 gigabytes of onboard storage should do you well. Told you you got the 12 megapixel camera, dual pixel autofocus on the rear, LED flash, you get 4K and nine megapixel image recording. You can pick stills while you're recording 4K. The phone did have some issues with 1080p 60 frames per second. There was some focus hunting issues and stuff like that. If you go check out Easy Computer Solutions, he has a whole ton of videos about the hunting and focus problems at 1080p 60 frames per second. I won't get into that too much and it shouldn't be a deal breaker for you because overall the camera is completely capable and still one of the top cameras out there. You have tons of features on this thing. You have, like I said, HDR10 compliant. You have your always on display, 32-bit audio. You have a headphone jack. That's where the audio is gonna come from down there. 
which is a great feature to have. You have a dual, dual, you have a single firing speaker on the bottom that is not the best, but it does get loud, it's a little tingy, and then you have your USB Type-C down here. This thing has great audio recording for video, which is great because a lot of the phones out nowadays, especially Apple's, somehow can't produce great audio. Samsung produces unbelievable audio. So with Android Oreo being introduced to this phone a year later, it definitely moves this thing up to a great buy. Before that, I was having a lot of battery issues with this phone. I would barely get three hours of screen on time. I'd also have some stutter and lag on the phone. And now since the Oreo update, everything's been running really, really smooth on this phone. I was very surprised to see how much Oreo had changed this phone for the better. So you get all the features with Oreo that you would on any other phone that has Oreo. So you're gonna get, let's see, you're gonna get picture in picture, where you press what home and you still get picture in picture. Big shout out to Tony Pazzo. And you get picture in picture, which is a cool feature. You get this right here on the screen, if we can bring that in. You get different color tabs right there. Any type of music or media is gonna give you a different color tab, depending on whatever color they choose. That's the way I've seen it to work. But Samsung just really gives you a great experience. They do have a heavy skin, but they pack every feature that you could ever ask for in a phone. This thing has more features all in one than any other phone out there, in my opinion. You get a heart rate sensor. You get IPA, IP68 water and dust resistance. Another big feature on this phone was the implementation of a face unlock. They used biometrics this year to give you different options for unlocking your phone. If you didn't want to use the fingerprint sensor on the rear or you didn't want to use a pattern or a pin, you could use face unlock. So what this did was use the front facing camera to pretty much detect your face and it would unlock your phone not the most secure people were able to dupe it with photos and things like that for me I've never had an issue with it where being duped I've tried it with my girlfriend tried it with my friends I've tried it with my daughter and nobody was able to dupe it with their face but with that said it wasn't the most secure option they also had an option with an iris scanner which is pretty high security and it gave you a different option to use and it was not as easy to use as facial recognition, not as fast, but it did give you another option that was more secure. So this is how you set it up. You get ready to unlock your phone, you hit continue, and then they want you to hold your device about 10 to 14 inches away from your face and line it up with your eyes. You line your two eyes up with the circles right there, and then you're just gonna see my camera, obviously, but that's how you would register your iris. For me, I registered my face and I used my fingerprint sensor. I did not use iris scanning too much. It took a little bit too long for me. Facial recognition worked really good. It was fast. Did have some problems in low light though. So I would revert back to my fingerprint sensor when I wanted to do that. And then other times I just lift my phone up and within you know a second, your whole screen is unlocked and you're in your phone with facial recognition. So that is a great feature they implemented. You know, going forward, they changed that now on the S9 and they have something they call the intelligence scan, which uses facial recognition with your iris scanner. So that is that. But with this phone right here, you have both of those options, plus a fingerprint sensor, plus a pin or pattern. So you have many options to open your phone. Like it said, Samsung gives you every feature available. And that is just another implementation of that. You get fast wireless charging. You get Quick Charge 2.0 and the regular USB type C charger. You get unbelievable cameras. Let's get into the cameras. Give you a little quick view of those. You get Bigsby Vision, which we'll get into Bigsby in a second. We point it at an image and it can take a picture of it and read text. It can help you shopping. It's not the best, but it can translate some stuff for you. Let's get into the features. You get all sorts of filters right there. Right here, you get a pro mode, panorama mode, selective focus, which is gonna be kind of like their version of a portrait mode on a single lens. It uses software and it only does things that's within 20 inches of the screen. So it's not the best, but it does work good. They have slow motion. I believe it's, I forget exactly how much the slow motion is on this. I think it's only 120 frames or 240 at 720p. Nothing really spectacular on the slow motion. 
They have hyperlapse, works well, food, virtual shot I've never really used, and dual camera, which is really cool. Dual camera allows you to record two cameras at the same time. So you get a front camera and a rear camera filming at the same time. That is a cool option. If you're gonna do some kind of vlogs, you can show a lot of stuff in that. You have auto mode, and then you have a full pro mode, which gives you your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance, your focusing, everything that you could need in a pro mode. So the cameras are really incredible. Front facing cameras, you get your selfie mode, you get a wide selfie, you get selective focus, which is gonna be your selfie portrait mode, and then you get virtual shot. So the front facing camera, like I said, is capable. It's not the best, but it does, it does the trick. You also get HDR on both the front and back. So they're both very, very, very capable cameras, and I'll leave some camera samples at the end of the video. Moving on from the cameras, we'll get into Bigsby. This is the button right here. You get a full working assistant in this phone. Optimize my phone. So it actually picked up me re talking. So optimize my phone. And that will go in and optimize my okay, phone optimize automatically. And then it says teach me or continue. Hit continue. Sure, I'm optimizing it. And then it's optimizing it, yeah. it. So if it says, if you say something to Bigsby that it doesn't understand, you can teach it and it will do it. Bigsby is Perfect. one of the best assistants from getting into your phone and doing things internally on your phone. You can set up quick commands for Bigsby. Well, you say to Bigsby, uh, good night, and it will shut off all your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, anything that you set, you can put an alarm on, you can um, have it read you your reminders for the next day. You can set up so many commands to make Bigsby so personalized and so helpful that a lot of people don't give this assistant the credit it deserves. It can do great things if you put the time into it. A lot of people just don't want to deal with it and they just never use it. They think the button gets in the way and that's their opinion, which is great, but if you actually put some time into Bigsby and learn to use it, it works great. With that and having Google Assistant built in, you really can't beat it. So look at this. Speaking of Google Assistant, you now get Google Lens built in to, let's see if we can maybe do this. It didn't work that time because I didn't click it. There you go, Canon PowerShot, Canon Images, Canon, and it brings up everything that they found that's similar. You can use it with food and stuff, it works good. That's built into Amazon, I mean Amazon, Google Assistant now on Samsung phones. So that's pretty cool. That's the only thing you were able to get on Google Pixel before that you weren't able to get on the Samsung phones in terms of the Google Assistant. So now you get that Google Lens on Samsung phones, and I believe that's the only phone right now that has Google Lens besides using it through Google Photos. So overall, this phone is a really great phone. I don't wanna go on for too long, but it has so many features. It is so feature packed, and a year later, it's worth a great buy. Let's check out some of the prices on it. On Swapper right now, you can pick this phone up for $370 right here for the T-Mobile version. Let's click on that. And you get 370 in fair condition, 375 in good, 385 in good, 422. So you can get this phone dirt cheap right now. And it's worth every dollar of it. Even on Amazon, if you go on Amazon, Amazon you can get it $606 for the international version unlocked, $599 for that version. 520, 499 for the Verizon Plus factory unlocked, Orchard Gray, prime shipping. So for 500 bucks, you know you're getting it from a reputable dealer, even though Swap is very reputable, but you're getting it from Amazon, factory unlocked, prime in two days for 500 bucks. The only other phone for 500 bucks is maybe the 5T that could compete with this, and even that, the 5T may be a little bit faster, but you're running more of a vanilla stock Android and that's fine if that's what you're into, but I like having all my features. I like Samsung's overlay of it. It did bog it down when the S8 first came out, but now that Oreo's out, it's been working fluently. 
Battery life has increased by at least an hour of screen on time. So I can go all day and get about four to four and a half hours of screen on time now where I was barely getting three hours before. So the optimization of Oreo has really helped this out. I also like, where I don't have a text right now, but if I had a text, you click this little button right here and then it would come up, mark as read or reply, and you could reply straight from there when you get a text. You can also use edge lighting for around here if you want to do that. When you get notifications, there's so many overlays of this app's edge right here. You get your soft key edge, you get app's edge, you get download so many more, plus they already give you some built in. You can download them. There's so many apps, pairs, recent messages. You can get maps for the side. You can get so many of them are free and you can get paid versions. So that's another cool thing that Samsung does is the app's edge. You gotta get used to it, but if you use it a lot, it starts to become second nature and then you realize, wow, I have everything in the touch of a button right there waiting for me. Samsung also does their own apps, which is a little bit of redundancy because you're having Google apps and Samsung apps but they are supposed to be more optimized for the phone. Who's to say they are? I don't know, I don't really use them. I use mostly the Google Play Store ones. One thing I do use that is from Samsung is Samsung Themes. You can get wallpapers, themes, they have tons of them. Being Samsung is you know, such a well-known manufacturer, there's a lot of developers and a lot of people that work with Samsung, and look at this. You can get all NCAA basketball themes for March Madness, Right now, there's, all, there's just so many themes that change everything. They change your whole layout. Like you can see, I'm using some kind, I think it's called Midnight Blue. So everything is blue at the top right here. And then, you know, your dialer is all changed. Let's see if we can get to that. That's my, let's get to the dialer. So the dialer is all changed. That's all done by theme. And then you get your wallpapers are changed, your icons you can change through your theme. There's really a lot of things you can do through themes. So I check, I really advise that you guys check out Samsung themes. If you have a Samsung phone, you can change your icons. This is for your always on display. So you can add so much stuff to your always on display. Make it so customizable. It's another great thing about Android in general is being able to customize it like that is it's just great. Make it your own. And then with Samsung themes, it makes it so easy because it overlays a huge theme and then you can customize it even more on top of that. If you like you know, some parts of the theme but you don't like the wallpaper, you can change the wallpaper and just really make the phone your own, make it different than anybody else's phone around you. That's one of the great things about it. So I say, in my opinion, the phone is definitely worth it. This phone right here just came out and this is the new version. This is the new version of the Samsung Galaxy S8. This is the S9. Nearly identical. I believe the screen to me is a little bit better on the S9 and the cameras are a little bit better. It does have the new flagship processor in it, 845 with four gigabytes of RAM. The fingerprint sensors changed and you have updated cameras on the rear. But is it worth that difference in price of paying you know 750 bucks for this one right here where you can get this one for about four and change or 375 if you buy it used or even as low as 300 if you catch it on Craigslist and somebody just wants to get rid of it is it worth paying the upgraded thing for the s9 if I was the average consumer I would say no and I would go with the s8 one year later this phone is still going strong I throw a case on it because it is scratch heavy it scratches very very easily but if you get one of these lighter colors like the orchid gray it doesn't show the scratches as much I don't know if you can even see any of them right there there's some fingerprints and stuff but I throw a case on it and I keep it protected and that's the way I rock with it I don't think the fingerprint sensor will bother you you'll get used to it and overall for the price of this phone right now a year later it's a it's really a steal there's no other phones out there if you get a mid-range phone for 350 or even up to 500 bucks, it's not gonna touch this phone. Buying a brand new mid-range phone is a joke compared to buying a year-old flagship. The year-old flagship is gonna kill it in every way, shape, or form, and the Samsung Galaxy S8 does just that. Anyways, guys, I rambled on for a while. 
but I wanted to throw out my year review on this thing. Really liking it. Since Android Oreo has hit it, this phone is a whole new phone and it feels fresh and it feels new. And the new features of Samsung Galaxy with the Oreo and the new touch, uh, not touch with Samsung Experience 9.0, just really freshen this phone up. So if you're interested in buying a phone and you're looking to spend in this price range, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is a beast. There's also the S8 Plus. If you're looking for a bigger version, you gotta pay a little bit more, but you can still get really great deals on that. And that also has Oreo and all the features that are packed into this. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one year later review. It was long, but I just wanted to go over some of the major key points that were big for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more stuff coming with the Samsung Galaxy S9. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you later.